In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here. It's from the 2024 Leaving Cert exam honours level paper one. If you're looking for a different question from that paper, you should be able to find a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing. But it's we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage, pause, rewind, stop, rewatch, all those things you can do on YouTube. If you find this video useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. And what helps most is sharing it with a friend that's doing the Leave a Cert or one that's going to do it next year. In question eight, they tell us about a t-shirt company that has sales. Their sales are TX here. And um, the, the day, yeah, the, the day they have the sales is X. And they, they give us a table here and they simply ask us to fill in this table. So this is just taking this number here, putting it into this formula, getting an answer. Um, your calculator will do it, but they're actually the sums work out quite even. A zero minus 240 is 240. 60 goes in four times. Uh, four to the power of three is, uh, oh, I don't know, 64. Um, you'll end up with a minus here. 70 minus 64 is, yes, yeah, six. So just, I'll double check my notes on all these numbers. Um, again here, this will just end up with a three, a minus three in here. Minus three cubed is minus 27. Uh, 70 minus 27, 43. You'll end up minus two. Cubed is minus eight. We'll get a 62. Uh, minus one cubed, we'll end up with 69. Um, zero cubed, we'll end up with just 70. One cubed, we'll end up with 71. And uh, yeah, this would be uh, two cubed again, and we'll 78. So that was it, I double check those with your calculator, but um, there was a pattern there, it, it was quite smooth. For part two, another quite straightforward question, they simply want you to graph this, and uh, put this in on a graph, go to zero, go to six. Um, obviously my graph's not very accurate, they've given you a, a, a proper grid there. Uh, but you just put in these dots, uh, 60 is 43. You know what, let me edit this out and I'll put these dots in in my own time. Again, not very accurate, but I get this. And then you just wanna put a smooth curve between it. It seems to be going up and then slowing down and then speeding up again. Uh, obviously, if this was to stretch out a bit, it would look a bit like this, which a cubic um, function. Some of them do look like this with that, uh, that hump in the middle sort of being squashed on, on itself. Anyway, that was it for part A. I think a fairly straightforward question. Okay, on to part B. They same clothing company, this time they're selling scarves and they give us this function. They've also drawn us a nice rough graph, which is very useful, but I do wanna point out that you should be able to draw your own graph from this. And sometimes, in fact, they ask you to do that. So uh, just quite quickly, I'll show you, you should be able to draw this graph. Um, it should look like a cosine graph. Uh, because we're talking about cosines, um, it should be moved up 21. So it should be up in the air uh, by 21. So it should look like this. And then it should be stretched out by 19. So this is 21 up. This height here is, uh, so let's put it in like this. This gap here is 19. This gap down to here is 19. So that means this number, what's uh, 21 plus 19, which is the answer to this question, by the way. Um, is 40, uh, 21 minus 19 is two down there. And uh, this this inside here, like it should be a, a cosine function, should go to two pi. This bit up inside here um, really just divides two pi by two pi, we get one, and multiplies by 360. So we end up, oh, sorry, this was too far I went there. Uh, we end up with 365 here. Uh, I shouldn't have squashed that by the way, that was just a mistake by me. Anyway, that's the rough drawing they've given you here. And I've just filled in the numbers. Now I've answered the question by filling those numbers in. But it, that's something you should have been able to do yourself. Because they, they go on to ask you, find the minimum and maximum uh, values uh, yeah, for daily scarf. Basically the minimum and maximum values of this. And they tell you, you don't need to use differentiation. That's because they gave you the graph and you should know all these numbers. You should know that 21 just moves it up to 21, the middle of it to 21. And 19 here just stretches it out. So this number here should be 0, uh, 40. This number here should be the middle 
Uh, they don't ask you, but that'd be, I guess, 365 over two, or what's that, 182 and a half days. And this lowest number should be two. So they sell 40 scarfs here, they sell two scarfs here, and they sell uh, 40 scarfs here again. And, and remember, this makes sense. This is winter, winter, summer, winter. You don't sell many scarfs in summer, you sell lots in winter, pretty much. Okay, for part C, they introduce a new function, um, CT, and CT is equal to ST, which was the previous function, minus uh, 2.4 plus 0 0.03. Now, when I, when I go through these questions, I obviously do them on, on the paper first, and um, I was going to keep my graph from part B and show you how this would look different now. But interestingly, that's actually the question they ask in part D, so I'll skip that as a starting point. So just straight on to what they ask. They ask, find the value for T for which ST and CT are equal to each other. Now I can see lots of students getting confused of what to do here. I'm, I'm not really sure how to simplify it because it is a really simple question, but it just looks complicated. What happens if this and this are equal to each other? Well, if they're equal to each other, they'll just cancel each other. Uh, think of it like this. Uh, let's rewrite one of them, whichever you want. Remember, we're talking, we want them to be equal to each other. So let's just write this as CT equals CT. Like imagine S and a minus 2.4 plus 0 0.02, uh, 0 0.03 times T. Well, just take this from both sides. And uh, so take it over this side, CT minus CT would be zero equals um, 2.4 plus 0 0.03T. And th that's really, this could be just quickly reduced to that. Um, if we want to find out when these are equal to each other, what's the value of T when these equal to each other? Well, they just end up cancelling each other and we're left with this equals zero. Another way to think of that would be we want these to equal each other, well, we need this here to be zero. That's a, another good way to think of it. Then this will equal that. Either way, we should get this formula. And it's just a, it's, it's just a, a fairly simple a question answer. Move this over, 2.4 equals 0 0.03t. Divide both sides by that. 2.4 divided by 0 0.03 equals t. And put that into a calculator and we get uh, t equals 80. Okay, part D, uh, they give us uh, three drawings. One that looks like that, one that has a sine function like that, and another that has a sine function going up like that. And they ask us which of those does CT look like? And um, now I already went through how to draw ST earlier on, and that should, bring a, that should be useful to us. So let's draw our ST again. Remember, we had a center line of 21 and uh, it went around it like that. And let's continue it on. Around it like that. Okay, what changes here? Because ST is in this. CT has ST in it. What changes? Take away 2.4. So let's uh, draw it again here. If we take 2.4 away, that just moves everybody down 2.4. So we'll end up with a dotted line here and it will swing around, it'll go just underneath this time. It'll look like that. And what's next? Then we'll add on um, 0 0.03t. Well, this on its own does look like a line. It starts here and just has a slope of 0 0.03. Another way to think of that is every time I add on this, so I add on a bigger and bigger number. So if I draw it one last time, this number will stay where it is. This number here, right beside it, will get a number added on to it. This will get a number added on. This will get a number added on. They'll all get a number added on. Really, what it will look like is, uh, let's see, that was the top and the bottom. The middle was here. Instead of this middle line being straight, the middle line will slope upwards and we'll be left with some sort of curve around it, like that. Um, so the answer to the question D is uh, graph L, this one here. Uh, your justification, well, if you go through something like this, show that you, you take this away 
and you add this on or you could write something like uh, uh, 0 0.03 will tilt the graph uh, the overall uh, the overall function so it has a slope of 0 0.03 pretty much anything if you just watch what I said in the last few minutes and, and write your own words the examiner is just looking for something roughly some some rough ideas that are correct okay for part e uh, e they want us to find the local minimum and maximum i've rubbed out the picture that was here remember we're talking about the the sloped curved line here something like that sorry that's a terrible drawing but they want us to find the first local maximum of this so that's either somewhere around here maybe or somewhere around here because remember it's been tilted so Maybe the local maximum has now tilted outside of our range. So maybe it's, there's not a maximum there. Like originally it was at zero, but this tilting, maybe maybe it's not there or maybe it's just past it. Um, there's a minimum somewhere here and there's a maximum or maybe the maximum's outside our 365 range. Anyway, they want us to find this first local maximum. Now to help us do that, they have differentiated uh, CT. So they've given us the derivative of CT let's write it out here but let's um let's show us how they got it just in case you're unsure the the derivative of ct is just the derivative of ct it's differentiate st first which we can do up here the derivative of 21 is nothing the derivative of 19 times cosine this well we get the uh, differentiate what's in here this is the chain rule and multiply by 19. So that'll end up with, uh, how did they write the answer? Okay, let's move it over here. That'll end up with two pi multiplied by 19, which is 38 pi, divided by 365. Again, they give us this, I just wanna show you where it comes from. And then we'd have to differentiate the cosine, and that becomes a, a sine or a minus sine. Minus can come all the way up front here. A sine, and what's in here gets left alone. This is by the chain rule. Uh, 365. So that's the derivative of st. That's the derivative of all this here. Then differentiate minus 2.4. That's nothing. It's a constant. And the derivative of this, here's a t. So the derivative of this is just 0 0.03. Okay, that's just to make sure we're all on the same page where this came from. They gave it to us, but that's where it came from. Okay, so they want us to find the, the local maximum, the first local maximum. Well, Maximums, actually they even tell us this then. Maximums are when the derivative equals zero. So let's just put this guy equal to zero. Let's do it over here. Um, well actually, if this equals zero, let's just move the minus over and we'll end up with uh, three, uh, 38 pi over 365 um, sine two pi t over 365 equals 0 0.03. That's uh, just this equals zero, we should get that. Let's just start fixing, there's only one unknown, t. Let's just start moving things around. Um, leave sign where it is, two pi t over 365. That equals, let's multiply this by 365, divided by 38, and divided by pi. Well, uh, have I got any of this? Just checking my notes quickly there, and um, that would equal, oh my god, 219 divided by 760 pi. Of course, you can do all this in your calculator, so you don't have to do it out <laughs> by hand, but I just need to show you guys. Um, okay, so what do we do next? Let's get the inverse sine of both sides. So we'll end up with 2 pi t over 365 is equal, have I wrote it down? Yeah, uh, 0 0.09185. Make sure this is still in your calculator though, because I'm not sure how many uh, how many um, decimal places we need here. So we multiply this by, let's rewrite, multiply by 365, divided by two, divided by pi, and we get t is equal to uh, 5.33586. Um, so round off to nine. And they wanted it to the nearest day. So that's uh, approximately five days. Okay, one last thing to check is, do we have a maximum or a minimum? Now, what we can do is we can differentiate this again. Uh, that's gonna take a lot of, not a lot of work. We just differentiate this again, we get some sort of cosine out. Uh, we would get, uh, let's see, we get uh, 70, 76 pi squared 
over 365 squared it'd be a it'd be a minus still it'd be cosine this and then we have to put this number in see if it's bigger or less than zero so that's one way to do it and that's perfectly okay another way is just to use our logic here remember this graph it goes up to around here is 365 um, around here is like 182 days so after five days there's a lot of the maximum or a minimum well it's not this that's definitely not so it must be here and it must be a maximum so just by our, our drawing if we stead checking actually I have uh, stay checking if you solve this for other remember sign gives many answers uh, you will also get an answer of yeah, so we get about five days. We also get 177 days. That's in around here. That's the minimum. This must be a minimum. And uh, then next one we would get would be 370. So it's actually outside of our 365 range. It's just past this line. Um, so yeah, that must be a maximum just by using the graph. But if you want to differentiate that again, by all means, go ahead and uh, answer it that way. Okay, that's it for question eight. If you have any follow-up questions or corrections, mistakes I made, uh, let me know in the comments. Until next time, have a great day.